things that makes me really, really sad is when I'm grading these tests and I look to see and I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? Some people are actually getting these wrong. So I'm kind of frustrated about that. You could put it all in the calculator to get it right. So I'm gonna go ahead. I have my handy dandy calculator here. Uh, so I'm gonna take, so it's five times 2.9 minus four divided by two, hit enter, and I get 12.5 as an answer. So on these ones right here, that's basically all you have to do is enter stuff into the calculator for a lot of this. Okay, same thing here for number two. So it's four squared minus parentheses, four close, open, three, open. close, plus two, plus two, get six. So your calculator will do everything for you. Okay, same thing goes for the rest of these. So it's gonna be seven plus 15 divided by three minus. Now, uh, if you're using this calculator, there's a little fraction portion right here that we could do. So we're, we're, we're gonna do this part. So it's gonna be zero over seven. So this is actually one way of actually trying to write the fraction is zero divided by seven or zero over seven. So that's a fractional thing here. And so we get just 12. Okay, uh, next one. So again, calculators will do all these for you. So you know what, just let your calculator do it. Two times radical. So it's gonna be radical 16. Close that plus parentheses eight minus radical 25 close so I'm closing this radical for this one right here and I'm also closing for that parentheses there so hit enter and I get 11 um, the next right here for five <clears throat> I'm gonna go through <coughs> measure line segment a B so from here to here, so it's start to end, this one right here, um, it, it's it's measured, and I think this is supposed to be inches right here. Usually it has that, but this one right here, it says goes to 15. Most rulers actually will go to 12 if it's a foot, but this one goes straight to four. <clears throat> so for this length of AB is gonna be four. Uh, inches I think so if that's what those units are uh, right here for this one right here it's there's partial in between so like I said since the thing doesn't have any markings on it we're just going with this um, number six okay this one right here is it's like almost exactly the same as what you are gonna see on the test um, a casting machine a casting is machined so that 22 and a half pounds of metal remains. If the casting weighed this, how many pounds were removed? So if this is what I'm left over with, and this is what I started with, so it, it's I'm going to see what's going to be there. So to figure out how much I have, so start with this, take away this, and I'm going to be left with whatever was taken off. So your calculator, so if you're using this calculator, I put this one on the syllabus. Uh, this one actually has everything for this. 22A, B, C button, one, A, B, C, five. Oh, crap, ah, I'm gonna clear that one. I gotta start with this one here first. So it's 25, A, B, C, three, A, B, C, 10, because I have to start with what I started with, and then I subtract what I have left. Minus, right here, my 22, ABC, one, ABC, five. Okay, and then when I'm done, I will go hit enter, and it gives me my answer. Since I put both my answers in as fractions already with mixed numbers, it's gonna give my answer as a fraction with a mixed number. 
So my answer is going to be 3 and 1 tenth. Like that. And those are going to be in pounds. So please make sure you're actually labeling all your units. That's going to be part of your answers. You got to have your labels on all of these. Uh, for these ones right here, for number seven, got it right here. All right, for number seven, we're gonna have right here. Um, there's a setup for this one, so it's percent over 100 is equal to is over of, or another way of writing it is percent. Pull it down. Put it, pull it down like this. More. Oh, don't forget, this is scrolled. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> no worries. I just want to see it so I can see the what you call it the questions. Yeah, okay. the chat. Just making sure. Hey, no worries. Thank you. That's your job. One hundred is equal to part over. Now the reason why I actually I like this way the is over of because they actually state it using is and of all the time. So if it's a word problem, you're going to have usually parts and holes. So this is we're finding one third of, you know, three fifths. So for my math, this of three fifths. So now one third is supposed to be my piece that I'm finding. So this would be kind of like my percent of what I'm looking for. So if I'm doing it, it's going to be turn this into a percent. So if I change this into percent, I could actually do all this using this one right here. So one third of this would be changing it to this and then doing it like this, or we could try and do it as fractions. Now, if we do it as a fractions, it's, it's kind of iffy because we don't actually have a clear setup you have to understand certain things that we're take, taking and doing. So if I want to find half of something, so if I want to say half of five, so it's say one half times five would give me, you know, multiply that five over two, which is 2.5. That's half of five. So now if I'm doing one third of five, and this is going to go along with the fractional, the percentage ones are the ones that we're actually going to use this. So when we're doing this, we have to pay close, close, ugh, pay close attention to this. So if I'm finding one third of this, so I'd actually just multiply this. So it's one third times three over five. Multiply those fractions. So one over three times three over five to my calculator and gives me one-fifth as my answer. So one-fifth for that answer. All right, questions before I keep going? Hopefully, nothing yet. All right, so let's go on to the next one. So again with this, so this one's just using a fractional form, but these ones, uh, I actually have percent of and is. It says 20% of something is what number? So I'm looking for the is. So if I'm doing my thing, it's going to be 20 over 100 is equal to is over of, which I had up here, is over of. My is is what I'm looking for, and it says of 400. Of 400. And if is what I'm looking for, that's my unknown. So I'm going to put a variable there. So this is completely different than this thing right here. I really, psh, I hate those. Anyway, all right, I'm going to use cross products for this right here. So that means I'm going to multiply this way and multiply this way. So 100 times X gives me 100 X. And that's going to be equal to 20 times 400, which is 8, 1, 2, 3, 8,000. Divide both sides by 100. So X is, that's gonna give me 80. So 80 is actually gonna be my answer for that one right there.
Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Um, eight is 10% of what number? So that means I'm, miss, I'm looking for the of. So I'm gonna have 10 over 100 is equal to eight is, so that's an eight over of what number? So my of is the one I'm missing, so that's gonna be there. So go ahead, do my cross products, and I get 10x equals 800. Eight times 100 gives me 800. Divide both sides by 10. X equals 80. Yeah, good coincidence. All right, next one is gonna be what percent? So now I'm looking for the percent. The percent's my unknown. So it's X over 100 is equal to, of 50 is 30. So that's 30 on top, because it's is 30, 50 on bottom. So cross products, I get 50. X is equal to, that's gonna be 3,000, 3,000, divide both sides by 50. So X is, that's going to be 60. I think it's 60. I know I have a calculator here. Three, one, two, three, divided by 50. Yep, I get 60. Okay, so let's take a look at Next one here it says there are 25 women in a class of 35 students. Find the percent of men in the class to the nearest tenth of percent. So for this one right here, we're gonna go through and so there are 25 women in a class of 35 students. So this is my women and this is the whole. So it's asking for men in the class. Find the percent of men in the class. So it's not a ratio of like men to women, it's men to the class, and there's 35 in the class. So simple math. So if there's 25 women, that means that there's gonna be 10, 10 men. So there's gonna be 10 men <coughs> over 35. <coughs> and so for this one right here, I'm gonna go through and divide this out and then you get your answer then multiply that times 100 to get your percentage so to do this you take your top which is 10 divided by your bottom which is 35 and then times 100 and it says round to the nearest tenth so the tenth is going to be this five right here and so the seven is gonna make that five go up. Since this one's the one that's we're rounding it to, I only look at this next one here. So the seven's gonna make that one be a six, so it's gonna be 28.6. There you go. So 28.6 is gonna be my percent. The reason why I did that, uh, percent is always out of 100. That's what the word percent mean if I break that down. So percent is out of 100. I take this out of 100 and I turn it into that ratio right there. Uh, are we all good still? Hopefully. All right, so now for right there, I actually need to understand a couple of these things. It says how many inches are in two and one third yards? So I have to do a conversion. So for every single, um, I'm sorry, um, I gotta back up a little bit. All right, so for every single yard is three feet, and I know that every foot is 12 inches. So it's gonna be, if I do my unit conversion, like, let me see, two, one third yard over one times, I hate the way we have all this set up right here. So it's gonna be yards on the bottom 
and I'm going to convert to feet. So one yard is three feet. So this is one conversion. So I need to convert it one more time. So it's going to be times. So now, since I'm going to be able to cancel out yards here, I need to get rid of the feet because I'm looking for inches. So I'm going to cancel out feet. So to cancel out feet, since feet are on top here, I need to put feet on bottom here and I need to go inches on top here. So I know that one foot is 12 inches. So when I do my math and I do all my canceling, let's see if I got my pen here somewhere. There we go. All right, so right here, since we're actually doing yards, cancel out yards, cancel out yards, and then for right here, I'm gonna cancel out feet, cancel out feet. So when I'm done with this, I could actually multiply straight across the top and then straight across the bottom, and then the units that are gonna be left over are gonna be in inches. So I can multiply straight across the top on there. So 2 and 1 third, 2 ABC, 1 ABC, 3 times 3 times 12. And I get 84 right here. So it's going to be 84 inches over 1, 1, 1, 1. So my answer is just gonna be 84 inches here. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, next one. So for this one right here, it says change three miles per hour into feet per hour and I'm going to use some more paper because I don't want to try and cram this in here anymore. So three miles per hour into feet per hour. So three mile one hour. So I'm going to do my unit conversion again. Uh, sit there. There we go. Sorry. So I'm going to have to get rid of miles. So that means that miles has to be on the bottom. Okay, so I have miles on bottom. And I'm going to convert that to feet. This is one of the unit conversions that we're going to have from uh, the rest of the, uh, the reference sheet and stuff like that. So from the unit, uh, I think it's unit two. Might have been unit two or unit three where I actually did the unit conversions. You're gonna need some of these things on your reference sheet for your final exam. So one mile is 5,280 feet. And since I'm going into miles per hour, right now I'm in miles per hour, and going to feet per hour. So I do not need to change hours because hours is already where it's at. So I'm gonna have miles cancel. And then I could just multiply straight across. and the because I'm canceling out miles, the units that are gonna be left over is gonna be feet. So three times 5,280. I get 15,840. And that's gonna be in feet per hour. Are we okay here? Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Next one is gonna be 30 gallons per minute to quart per second. 
So 30 gallons per minute. It's one minute. And I have to change that into quarts per second. So I'm changing gallons into quarts. Now, so from right here, I'm gonna have gallon on bottom, and then I'm gonna go quart on top because one gallon is equal to four quarts. And now, since I'm gonna be able to cancel out gallons right here, now that I have that set up, the next thing I have to do is gonna be quarts per second. So right now I'm in minutes. So if minutes are on the bottom, therefore minutes also has to be on top. Minutes on top, and I'm gonna change this into seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds right here. So now that I have that set up, I can cancel out the minutes. So that means that I'm gonna be left with, you. my units on top are gonna to be quarts over seconds. So do my math, I get 120 quart over 60 seconds. And so now I have numbers on both top and bottom here, and I could actually do the math. So 120 divided by 60 is gonna give me two. So two quart per second is gonna be my final answer on that one. All right, let's take a look at number 15. Multiply and express the product in scientific notation. Um, these ones right here, you have to be able to understand a couple things. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I know this is on. This is kind of weird that it's not giving you numbers, but you just have to understand certain things. So multiply and express the product in scientific notation. So if I do this, I'm gonna write it out as like five times 10 to the second and six times 10 to the fifth. So if I were to write this, okay, so product in scientific notation. So to multiply those, that's what you're doing. So now if you are using this calculator right here, let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. All right, so if we are using this calculator right here, we can actually go right here where it's in blue, changes to scientific. And so now you get the SEI on the bottom of the calculator here. So in that scientific notation, I'm gonna put parentheses, five times 10 carat two, close, and do the next one, six times 10 carat five, close. And since I have my calculator and scientific notation already, I just hit enter. And it's gonna give me my answer in new scientific notation. So that one's gonna be like three times 10 to the eight. So there's scientific notation for a product. If we were to do the same thing as a division, so it's gonna be five times 10 to the second divided by six times 10 to the fifth. So do the division this time, parentheses, five times 10 to the second divided by parentheses, six times 10 to the fifth, close it, enter, and it's gonna give me 8.3 times 10 to the negative fourth. So, okay, so there is an example of a quotient. Okay, 17, uh, raise a number 
in a scientific notation to a power. So if I were to take that first one, 5 times 10 to the second to the fourth. So I would do the same thing in the calculator. So 5 times 10 to the second and raise that to the fourth. Hit enter. And I get 6.25 times 10 to the 10. Like that. Okay. Uh, are you, any questions so far? All right. Let's keep going then. All right, so we should be at, uh, slide it up. All right, so we took all those. Now it's time for 18 and 19. Eighteen says the following temperatures were recorded. What is the average? So all we have to do is add them up and divide by the number. So it's 100 plus 99 plus 88 plus 81. And there is one, two, three, four. That's going to give me my average. Okay, change my calculator back. So right here and I want flow F L O okay so that's gonna be clear 100 plus 99 plus 88 plus 81 I get this number right here on top divided by the number on bottom 92 and that's Fahrenheit for those Nineteen. Uh, so on nineteen here, where did my other paper go? Oh. Uh, I think I put it in the back. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. So for 19, these hourly pay rates are used at fast food restaurants, cooks, 825, servers, 895, bussers, 720, dishwashers, 720, managers, 1025. Find the mode and the median pay rate. So, I don't know, okay. All right, so yeah. average is the mean, the mode is the most, Average is the mean. And the median is the middle. So if I put these in order, okay, so let's start with the lowest is 720 plus 720. And then the next one's going to be. 825, 895, and 1025. So one, two, three, four, five. I have five of these set up here. <clears throat> so let's start with the, uh, let's go with the mode. Mode is gonna be what appears more than once. So the mode is gonna be these because it appears the most. Now the next thing is gonna be the median. Median is the middle. So I could take it and just mark it off from either side. So bam, 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 bam. So that's gonna put me.
Bahati Leonidas, please come to the registration office. Bahati Leonidas, registration office. Okay, sorry about that. I'm still at school right now. All right, so we have our middle number since we come from both sides. So our middle number is going to be 825 here. So middle is going to be the median. There we go. So we have those. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. So that's going to be 19. Okay, so number 20. Okay, here I am. All right. Easel Allen earned a final grade listen table for the past term. The final QPA quality point average to the nearest hundred. Find the QPA quality point average. So, now, this is kind of, kind of how your thing weights for your overall GPA. So it's going to be an A is a uh, fours. It's worth four hours. So you get three of these. For every one of those, you get three. So it's going to be three times four. That's going to give you that. So now a B is worth three. Four, three, and an A is four again and a C would be two and all that other stuff. Okay, so now right here. So we have this right here. Find the final, uh, find the average. So now since I have this already set up, so I have all my points per hour. So I multiply this, so it's gonna give me my 12 for this one right here. So it's 12 quality points. This one's going to give me nine quality points. And the next one is gonna be 12 again. So now I have the total for this one right here that is gonna be there. Okay, so I add those up. On, oh, there it is. All right, so it's gonna be 12 plus nine plus 12, 33. So I have 33 total quality points. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this and divide it by what I have right here. So per hour, it's quality point average. So I want it per hour. So I'm gonna take this and divide by nine. So that's gonna give me divided by nine because I get nine total hours and that's gonna give me about three point, uh, says round to the nearest 100, six, seven. And that would be the quality points. So this is actually basically like having your weighted GPA. All right, let's take a look at next one. So I have the formula already. So. 100 degrees Celsius. So if I'm changing to Fahrenheit, all I have to do is plug that in. So F is equal to nine over five times 100 plus 32. So nine over five times 100 plus 32, Ooh, 32. Right here, 212. Now, if you, if you do know some little bit about this, about boiling water, so at sea level, 100 degrees Celsius is boiling point, just like um, zero degrees Celsius is freezing. But in Fahrenheit, it's 212 degrees, and when water freezes, that's gonna be 32 degrees. So I don't know why they decided to come up with 32 and 212, but eh, I guess they rolled the dice and we chose that one. All right, so this next one right here says two successive 
uh, recordings for a surgery parent's tent. Surgery patient's temperature were 103.2 and 97.8. Express the temperature change with a sign number. So right here, so I'm gonna say that it went down by a sign number, so let's see. So I'm gonna do this one minus this one. So 97.8 minus 103.2. Seven point eight minus one o three point two. So it's going to be negative five point four degrees. So the change is that it's going to be negative five point four. That means it's going down five point four degrees over however time. Okay. So let's take a look at number twenty three. So for 23, it says solve the following equations. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So eight x minus three x equals six plus nine. Combine like terms. I have all my x's on the left already and I have my constants on the right already. So that's gonna give me five x equals six and nine is 15 divided by five x is 3. So we solve for x, x equals 3. Now for the next one here, make sure I'm still on here. So 7x minus 3 parentheses x minus 8 equals 28. So go ahead do a distribution. So 7x minus 3x so I'm distributing here and I have to distribute to both. So negative and negative is gonna give me a positive. 24 equals 28. I'm gonna go through and combine like terms right here. So I have these X's. So four X plus 24 equals 28. Now subtract 24 from both sides because I'm trying to get my variables by itself. So four X is 4 divided by 4, x is 1. Okay, so same thing here. Now with fractions, it's the same thing. It really is. You just have to do part of it in the calculator if you're having trouble with the math. So m plus 1 fourth equals uh, 3 over 4. To get m by itself, I would have to get rid of this. So if it's positive 1 fourth, I'm going to have to subtract 1 fourth from both sides of the equation. So m is equal to 3 over 4 minus 1 over 4. They already have common denominators. So 3 over 4 minus 4 over 4 is 2 over 4. And 2 over 4 will reduce to 1 half. So I get 1 half on this one. Okay, so let's take a look at 26. Graph of this. Now, if you graph this, this is actually really, really easy. Start by this number right here. This is called your y-intercept. So that means it's gonna cross the y-axis. This one's the y-axis here, and this one's your x-axis. This number right here is your slope. I'll label this one. So we're gonna start at three, positive three. One, two, three. I'm gonna put a dot right there. Now my slope is two. But we have to always write it as a fraction, so I'm gonna put that over one because slope is always rise over run. So it's rise over run. So with the rise over run, I have two over one. So from this starting point, that means that I'm going to go, since we always read this going from left to right, I'm gonna do my math left to right. So it's going to rise two 
and it goes over 1. Up 2, 1, 2, over 1. And from this dot right here, I'm going to do the same thing. Up 2, over 1. Now I can do the same thing going backwards. So if, I, if I'm going this way, right 2 over 1. If I'm going left, I am going to do backwards, so it's going to be down 2. So all you guys need is actually just two of these dots. Uh, if you have two of them, you could use those to actually draw your straight line. Oh, I had a ruler here. Uh, you see my ruler, Franny? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to take my handy dandy ruler right here. Draw your line. There we go. And that's all you need to do is get those full points right there. Ugh. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Give you guys a second for this one. I know. I'm looking at the lag. I'm trying to watch it from my computer right here. So I'm seeing it. Ian, you okay? All good. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you go give me a uh, rock star? It's in, my, it's in the TARDIS. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the next one, which is 27. So for 27 here, evaluate this. So it says the formula P equals A plus B plus C. So P equals A plus B plus C. We know A, we know B, and we know C. All right? P is equal to 50 plus 43 plus 45. Thank you. You want to hold on to those? Okay. Just in case. All right, let's go ahead and add those together. So we get 138. All right, next question. Distance is rate times time, or D equals RT. Find the rate if the distance traveled, so there's your D, and the time traveled is four. And so if it's gonna be, the whole thing is gonna be miles and hours, so that means it's going to be uh, miles per hour. So right here, distance, so it's 140. So that's my D is equal to R, which I'm looking for the rate, times four hours. So now four times R, to undo that, I'm gonna do a division to try and get this. So divide both sides by four. So I get 140 divided by four. It's gonna be 35. 35 is equal to R. And since we're actually talking about R as my rate, and that's gonna be miles per hour. So it's gonna be 35 over hour. <clears throat> All right, solve for the inequalities. So for these ones, it's the same step as my other algebra problems. So it's gonna I have 5t minus 18 less than 12. Add 18 to both sides. 
t less than is going to give me 30 divided by 5 t is less than 6 so I don't have to do any changing of my signs I just say what it is keep bringing everything down if I divide by a negative number I will have to flip the sign but this is t is less than 6 All right, next one, three parentheses, seven plus x greater than, equal to 30. I have to distribute here first. So if I distribute, I get 21 plus three x equal to 30. Subtract 21 from both sides. So three x equal to 9 divided by 3, x is going to be, ah, crap, change the symbol. Sorry, did not mean to do that. x is still greater than or equal to 3. So I'll give you a second for that one, get caught up. All right, so let's take a look at the next one now. Uh, we're gonna have four y minus eight greater than two y plus 14. So I'm gonna still do my algebra the same way I have been doing it. So it's gonna be plus eight, plus eight, four y is greater than two y plus uh, 22 minus 2y minus 2y so that's going to give me 2y greater than 22 divide by 2y is greater than 11 there we go All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, use the formula. Find the total resistance. If one resistance, uh, resistance one, I'm sorry, is nine ohms, and the second is eight ohms, round to the tent. So for this one, I'm gonna do, so resistance total is equal to R1, so that's gonna be my nine times eight over nine plus eight. So in my calculator, so it's gonna be on the top nine times eight, which is gonna give me 72 over nine plus eight, which is 17. Okay, round to the 10th. So it's gonna be 72 divided by 17 And round to the tenth, so that's going to be this one right here. So it's going to be 4.2. So my answer is going to be 4.2 ohms.
All right, so let's take a look at next one, 33. If a compact car uses 62.5 liters of unleaded gasoline to travel 400 miles, how many liters of gasoline would the driver use to travel 350 miles? We're on to the 10th. So, now, so let's figure out miles per liter. So if it's gonna be, I'm gonna do like a cross products on this. So 400 miles over 6.25 liters equal to 35 miles, I'm sorry, 350 miles over so many liters. So I know it's gonna be using the same thing, so whatever my miles per liter it is. So uh, I put the decimal in the wrong place. It's supposed to be right there. So 62.5, sorry. So do my math. So it's gonna be 400X is equal to 350 times 62.5. So I'm multiplying this crossways here. I get 21875, divide both sides by 400, divided by 400, and I should get 54 point, round to the tenth, so because this is a 8 right here, sorry, that's an 8 right here, so this 6 is going to have to go up, so it's going to be 54.7. and that's gonna be in liters. Okay, so let's take a look at next one right here. So I got that, got that. Let me see, I got more scratch somewhere. Find the equation of a line passing through a given pair of points. Now we're gonna go through and uh, start off with the slope intercept form. So we're gonna do a little bit of all of that. So slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And my uh, solve the equation for y. So we're going to y equals mx plus b. So I want to look at this and try to solve for it here. So there's one more formula we're going to have is y minus y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. So these are formulas that you will be allowed to have on your final. I'm hoping you will use. So I'm going to basically do the same thing three times for these points. So y2 minus y1, so 0 minus 0 over 6 minus negative 4. So that's going to give me 0 over 10, which is 0. So I have the slope, and now I'm going to use this one right here, my point slope. So it's going to be y minus y1 is 0. So I could use either one of these. It doesn't matter. So y1 is going to be 0 equals m, which is 0, times uh, x minus x1. So x minus x1, which is negative 4. So go through, do my stuff right here. So y minus 0 is y. 0 times that and 0 times that. So as I distribute this, I get 0. And so 0x, and that's plus 0. All that's going to be 0, so y equals 0. So I have an equation of a line, and it's y equals 0. So let's try this next one. Same thing, but now this one's going to be 1 minus 6 over... 7 minus 4. 
So 1 minus 6, 7 minus 4. So that's going to give me negative 5 over 7 minus 4 is going to give me 3. So that's my slope. And now I'm going to plug in my equation of right here. So I'm going to use this one right here. So it's going to be y. Hopefully I'm not off the page. Oh, kind of am. There you go. All right, y minus 6 equals negative 5 over 3 quantity x minus 4, because I'm using this point right here. So I'm just plugging those in. y minus 6 equals distribute negative 5 over 3x and negative, negative, positive 20 over 3. Add 6 to both sides. y equals negative 5 over 3x and so 20 over 3 plus 6 so twelve and two thirds it's positive twelve and two thirds so this is going to be my equation Okay, so let's do the next one. Uh, so it's going to be, let's see, I'll partition my paper so I can have this. Uh, 10 minus negative 4 over 5 minus negative 2. So for right here, do my math, I get 14 over 7, which is 2. So now it's y minus one of the points. Let's use negative 4 and uh, negative 2 equals 2 quantity x minus negative 2. Change negative negative is a positive so it's going to become y plus 4 equals distribute 2x plus 4 minus 4 to both sides so y equals 2x plus 0 now I don't need that plus 0 on there but I'm just showing you what I actually did get so it should be just y equals 2x alright so let's take a look at another problem Okay, graph inequality here. Now, I'm going to show you guys a trick, same trick that we did for the other graph, and this one's actually really easy. So start with your y-intercept, so it's going to be 1. My slope is going to be 3 over 1, So because that's this piece right here. 1, 2, 3 over 1. And this line, see how the markings are? right here so it's greater than or equal to so that means it's going to be a solid line if it's ever equal to it's going to be a solid line so all I need is the two points I can do this so I have here solid line because if not I would have a dashed line so I'll have a dashed line for this next problem here so I got this so now y is greater than so if I'm looking on the y-axis right here so this is again the y-axis and this is the x-axis y is greater than this so if I'm just looking at the y right here numbers that are greater than would be above this line right here so it's going to be above so everything up there can you go over the signs that you just did the signs that I just did uh, what signs this one right here when you change the signs like you just did that was two minutes ago. Oh, two minutes ago? So that one is the uh, other one? Oh, thank you. Number 36. That's what I needed. Number 36. OK. 
Okay, so let's go back to 36. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's 36 right here. So I'll go over it again. So here's my points. Thank you, Fernie. All right, so I should have negative 2, negative 4, and 5, 10. So I'm going to do my slope formula again for this. So it's going to be 10 minus negative 4. Now, it's 10 minus negative 4 because my formula is always minus. Because up here it's y2 minus y1. It just so happened that our y1 is, our, is a negative number. And so I use parentheses to show that it is a negative number. So it's y2 minus y1. And I'm using parentheses to show that. Over 5 minus negative 2. So that's still the same thing. But now two negatives will make a positive. So in all multiplication, two negatives is, makes a positive. But when we're putting signs next to each other like this, the same rule applies. So two negatives will make a positive off of this. So we get this positive, this positive. 10 plus 4 is 14. Over 5 plus 2 is 7. That gave me the 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but now this time I'm going to use the my slope form or my equation. So I'm going to use this equation right here. So it's going to be y minus y1. y1 is here. Negative 4 equals m, which is 2. Quantity x minus x1, which is also negative 2 right there. So now for this problem right here, so since I have two negatives, so I have two negatives right here, that means these two will make a positive again. So negative, negative, that's a positive. So I change those to positive. So now that's going to be a y plus 4. Since two negatives will make that positive, and now I have to do my distribution. So 2 times x, 2x. And again, negative, negative right here with two signs next to each other positive. So now it's a positive 2. So now when I do my distribution, it's going to be 2 times positive 2, which is a positive 4. So I get a positive 4 there for that. So as I do, I did my distribution. Next thing is going to be right here. Okay, so are you okay up until this right here? Is there any questions over this? Oh, okay. All right. So right here, minus 4. I'm just going to finish it. Minus 4. So y equals 2x. That gives me 0. And then it's just y equals my 2x. All right. So let's go back to number 37 here. So on number 37, let's take a look. So for this problem... On number 37, I already said, for right here, this symbol says it's going to be y. Remember, alligator always eats the greater. So if the y alligator is even bigger, it's going to eat this one over here. So that means that everything above will be shaded. So that means everything above that, graph the inequality, so it's going to include all of this. So I'm using a highlighter because I don't want to use up my pen. So it's basically just all of that. Now, if I were to do number 38, I have to turn it into this form first. So it's going to be 2x plus y less than 3. So I want to get y first by itself. So that means I have to subtract 2x. So it's going to be y is less than negative 2x plus 3 because that's a positive 3 that's why it's plus 3 so now it's in the form that I need 3 is my y-intercept so 1 2 3 
put my dot right there. My slope is going to be like this. So it's going to be a negative 2 over 1. So my rise, if I have a negative rise, that means it's going to go down. So it's going to go down 2 and to the right 1. Down 2, right 1. And since this one right here is a it is a inequality and it's not equal to, this one gets a dashed line. So that's the difference between these. So I get dashed lines for some of them. This one just so happened to be a dash line. All right, so dash, dash. Yes, you have to make sound effects while you're doing it too. All right, so let's take a look. So it says y is less than all of this. So if I'm looking at the y again, so this is my y-axis, this is my x. So just look at the line on the y. So everything that's less than below this is going to be all of this. So for this problem right here, everything below is going to be highlighted or included in my answer there. There we go. All right, so all that's going to be part of my answer. So all those solutions will work. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at number 39. So for 39 here, we're going to have to do my multiplication. So now these are expressions. So I multiply the fronts. So it's negative times negative is going to give me a positive. It's a positive right there. And now it's going to be 8 times 3. It's going to be 24 x squared times x. When I'm multiplying those, I get another. So I add my exponents. So it's x to the third. And then y times y3. I add the exponents because there is a 1 here, even though that you can't see it. I don't know if you guys notice that. Uh, but there is a 1 there. So it's right here. That's y to the fourth power because 3 plus 1 is 4. And that's it. All right, let's take a look at the next one. m times m to the third. Again, I add my exponents when I'm multiplying. So that's going to give me m to the fourth right there. OK, now on this next one right here, I have a weird thing. So it's 32 times 3 fourths. I can do that on a calculator just so I could brag how great my calculator is. So 32 times 3 over 4. So it's going to be 24. So this piece is 24. And then the x, so x to the third times x to the fourth is going to give me x to the seventh because I have to add the exponents. All right, let's keep going. Oh my goodness. There's 67 problems here. <clears throat> yeah, trust me, there's not 67 questions on the final. Uh, I think there's only like 25. All right, so do my division. So I do the division first. So 8 divided by 4 is going to give me 2. And for this one right here, if my multiplication is adding exponent, my division is subtracting. So now this one's going to be a subtraction. So I'm going to show you the math on this one. So it's going to be n to the 2 minus 3 because I subtract from the bottom. If I'm going to do my math on that one. So I subtract the bottom from the top. So it's going to be 2n to the negative 1. And with my exponent rules, if I don't want to have a negative exponent, I would bring it down to the denominator. So in the denominator, that would be a positive. So it would be 2 over n to the first, or just 2 over n for that one. OK, so now for this one, I'm going to do each one individually. 
So A, so A is go with A, so it's going to be 1. Now on the bottom it's going to be minus, and I have a negative 2. So I subtract the bottom from the top, but then it's already a negative 2. So that's going to give me a number, and I'm going to set up my next part. It's going to be A to the negative negative plus third and then do the same thing for b. So b squared and minus this number right here. So take the bottom away from the top and that's gonna give me b to the negative two. Use my exponent rules. So if I have this, and all this is actually gonna come up to the top. Whenever I'm doing this, this is actually implementing that it is on top. So it's gonna be a to the third, b to the negative two, or a to the third over b to the positive two. Either way is still acceptable. Now for this one right here, this one doesn't divide evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this in calculator, see what I get. So 12 over 18, 2 over 3. So it gives me a fraction already. So 2 over 3. Do the same thing with my x's. So x to the third minus, there's a 1 right there. Because there's always a 1, it's implied. And then y to the fifth minus 3. So this is all in one thing. So I've actually done it differently each time. So I try to separate my variables on this one, this one right here, I just wrote it out. So now I have multiples here. So I could do my math. So it's gonna be 2 thirds x squared y squared. Because 3 minus 1 is 2, 5 minus 3 is also 2. So I'm gonna come up with that as my final answer. All right, let's take a look at 45. Multiply, divide polynomials, specify the result. So let's go ahead and I'm going to FOIL this. So first, outer, inner, last. First times first. That's gonna give me four X squared. First, outer, now all the way here. That's gonna give me positive 2xy inner that's what the i stands for that's going to give me plus 2xy and then my last right here positive times a negative it's going to be a negative y squared oops i made a mistake right here so this one right here, 2x times a negative, this should be a negative, I'm sorry. This should be a negative. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so 2x times this y, when I did the uh, outer, it was a positive and a negative. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, sorry. So I have a negative 2xy and a positive 2xy. These ones are like terms and I'm supposed to combine those. So it's 4x squared. Now, a negative 2 and a positive 2, those go away. And now I'm left with minus y squared. Because this goes away, so I have a positive 2 and negative 2 with the same variables. Those disappear. Okay, now let's do distribution going this way. So I'm going to layer my distribution. There's a couple ways of doing this, and I'm going to layer this one. Here it is, all right. So when I set up this one, okay, so I'm gonna do this first one all the way across, and then I'm gonna do the second one all the way across. So FOIL only works when you're doing a binomial times a binomial, so a two times two. 
and this one's a two times three. So I'm gonna m cubed minus m squared p plus m p squared. So there's the top one, so there's the first one. Now I'm gonna do the second one, so I'm gonna do this right here, I'm gonna multiply this one right here, I get m squared p, if I look, if I did this correctly, when I do my second one, I will line it up right here. So it's m squared p, because when I multiply those, next one's gonna become a minus, a positive and a negative is minus, it's gonna be m p squared, so when I did this one here, and my last one over here, so that's gonna give me positive, positive, so it's plus, that's gonna give me P to the third. So if I lined it all up like this correctly, they're all going to line up according to what their variables are. They are common variables like this. I have my M to the third. This gives me zero because I have a negative and a negative one and a positive one here. That goes away. I have a positive one and a negative one here. That also goes away. So my next term that I have is going to be plus P3. So my whole thing after I expanded all this is going to be M3 plus P3. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So, this is another one that's just like one of the previous ones up there. So I'm gonna bring it up so it's gonna be two x to the four minus one, because I have to take that away. So it's gonna give me two x to the third. Now for this one right here, negative six divided by two, it's gonna give me negative three and then I have y to the five minus three. That's gonna give me negative three y squared. Number 50. Okay, so now I'm gonna separate my terms on this one. So this is, whenever I have a binomial over a monomial, so I have two terms on top and one term on bottom. I could separate my, my variables. So it's gonna be three x three over two x squared plus two x squared over two x squared. So basically what I did is I took, I separated these and since they're common denominators, I put them, I separated the denominators into two separate. So now I could actually do the math on this one right here. I think that was me. Okay, so right here, this is gonna be three over two. And this is gonna give me, uh, let me see. So it's gonna be x cubed minus two plus, now two over two is one, x squared over x squared is also one. So this is all gonna cancel out because the same on top and bottom plus one. So then my answer is just gonna be three over two X, because that's what I get from here, plus one. All right, for number 51, now complementary means 90 degrees, supplementary means 180 degrees. Find the complement and supplement of a measure that's 57 degrees. So that means complement, both of them together have to add up to 90. So to do complement, I would do 90 minus 57, 
which is going to give me 33. So the complement would be 33 degrees. For the supplement, I'm going to have 180 minus 57. 57. And that's going to give me 123. So supplement means that together they have to add up to 180. So 57 and 123 will give me 180. Complement means it adds up to 90. So it's 57 and 33 will give me 90. Okay, all right, I'll give you a second for that one as we're changing here. All right, anyone have any questions so far? All right, guess not. <clears throat> All right, classify the angle measures term right, straight, acute. So right is 90 degrees, straight is 180 degrees, acute is less than 90, obtuse is greater than 90, but less than 180. All right, so this is gonna be acute, this is gonna be obtuse, this is a right, and this is a straight. All right, let's take a look at 56. So this is an area, this one's a parallelogram. So parallelogram area is equal to base times height. My base is going to be 8.9 times my height, which is 3. So 26.7. And your height is always straight up and down. It has to be this one right here. It's never the diagonal. So area is 26.7 centimeters square because area is always going to be square all right 57 it's a triangle area is equal to one half base times height so area is one half my base is 10 times my height which is six so my area is 30 centimeters square. Now, trapezoid, area is equal to one half, H, B1, plus B2. So B1 and B2 are the top and bottom. The height, again, is always going straight up and down. So area is one half, four, uh, 9 plus 13. So let's do the math. 1 over 2 times 4. Parentheses. 9 plus 13. Now, if you notice what I did, I did order of operations. So I could have used parentheses around here, and it, my calculator was still done the same thing. So enter I get 44 so 44 centimeters square all right so let's take a look find the perimeter now perimeter is adding up all the sides together so let's see so if this is 5 this is 5 this is also 5 so that's going to be 20 
centimeters. And centimeters is a linear distance. It's only, you know, it has no thickness. All right, for this one here, I need to find my missing links. If it's 23 all the way across, it's seven from here to here. If this thing was a whole rectangle, I would complete it off like this. The whole thing would be 23 here. But since I have a chunk cut off, so I would take 23 minus seven, It's gonna give me 16 is this piece. I'm gonna do the same thing going this way. So the whole thing is supposed to be 15 this way, but I only go up five, so this piece right here is gonna be 10. So I'm only looking for this. So my perimeter is gonna be around here. So it's gonna be seven plus 10 plus 16 plus five plus 23 plus 15. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure I always count it. Otherwise, I will forget one of the sides. I have a bad habit of that. So, seven plus 10 plus 16 plus five plus 23 plus 15. 76. And feet on my units. Find the area of a sector with a central angle of 50 degrees in a circle with a radius of 12 inches. So the radius is 12 inches. Area of a sector. Now, uh, I think this is like, it it's, gives me anger. This one is, they give it to you in radians, the radians formula, so it's kind of angry. And it's always been like this on this test. So I'm telling you, when you see it on the thing, area of a circle is pi r squared. Area of a sector is a fractional portion of that. So it's gonna be area is equal to theta divided by 360, so this is my fraction because it's whatever this is, my angle, the whole thing would be 360. So 360 over 360 would be one whole circle. So it'd be a whole piece and that would be leaving us to this. But I want a fraction of it. So I want 50 out of 360 pi and my r is 12 squared. Round your answer to the hundreds. So for this one, its area is 50 over 360 pi 12 squared. So area is about, uh, said round to the hundred, so that's two. So it's gonna be 62.83, and my units are gonna be in inches, and since it's area, it's gonna be square. All right, find the, arc length of a sector formed by, you know, uh, by a 60 degree central angle if the radius of the circle is 30 millimeters. So it's basically the same type of thing, but this time they kind of gave you the right one, but they, they got the, you know, this one's in radian, but this one's in degrees because everything's degrees. So it's going to be S equals 60 over 360 times 2 pi and my radius is going to be 30 because that's what they just gave you and 
it doesn't say where to round to. So I'm going to do the same thing again. So 60 over 360 times 2 pi times 30. So it is, let's go 31.42 because I'm going to be looking at the second one. There's a hundredths. The 5 makes that 1 become a 2. So 31.42 S. And my units are going to be millimeters. And since it is a length, it's an arc length, it doesn't have any depth. So there is no area. So it's just going to be millimeters as a linear. But just asking the distance around. So if I was going to use this one as an example, it's only asking what is the length from here to here. That's all it's asking. All right, find the volume of a sphere with the radius of five centimeters. So volume is four thirds pi r cubed. Yeah, you will need this one for the test. So volume is four thirds pi five cubed. So four over three times pi times five raised to the third. So we're gonna need come up with does it say what around? Nope. So five two three point now if I'm gonna round this to a hundred like I did the last time, this eight makes that nine become a ten. And if that nine becomes a ten, that's also gonna go up here. So it's five two three point six zero because this becomes a ten. So I need to incorporate that as a 10, so it's one zero. So 523.60. And centimeters cubed. Volume is always cubed, area is always square, and distance is linear. So it doesn't get a square. Find the volume of a pyramid that has a square base of 48 meters on a side and a height of 100 meters. So let's see. So I'm going to draw my horrible pyramid here. So that means it's 48 here. It's also 48 here. And then the height from here up to here is 100 meters these are all in meters so if it's a square base so my volume is one third uh, length times width times height or another way of writing is capital B times height capital B would be the area of the base but you know what I'm just gonna write out the whole thing so volume is one third Length is 48 times 48 times 100. Alright, we get uh, 76800. So volume is 76800. And my units are meters, volume is cubed. Alright, let's take a look at the next one here 65. How many cubic inches are an aluminum can with a uh, two and a half inch? diameter and a four and three quarter inch height round to the tent uh, aluminum can my radius so if that is going to be my diameter that's all the way across so my radius would be half of this so two and a half 
So I'm going to do a decimal for the half. So it's going to be 2.5 divided by 2, 1.25. So R, 1.25. And uh, inches height, so 4 and 3. 4 is my height. So volume is pi r squared h. So this is all for cylinders. Okay. Now, so volume is pi. My radius is 1.25 squared times the height, which is 4 and 3 fourths. I 1.25 close squared times 4 and 3 over 4 and it gives me a decimal because I had one of the decimals in there so that's going to be uh, 23 point so does it say word around to the tenth yes so 23.3 so volume is about 20 3.3 and my units are in inches and it is volume cubed. Alright, let's take a look at next one. If a if five machines take 12 days to complete a job, how long will it take for eight machines to do the same job? Alright. So a couple things that we could do for this. So the work things, we could actually figure out uh, how much work each one does. So to figure that out, I could do, figure it out each machine, how long it would take if that is together for that one right there. So for this one, if I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be one machine and how many days so it's going to be uh, machines so let's see it would take five machines 12 days to complete a job and eight machines for the next one so you could actually try and set this up using like linears and, and you know different types of equations for this uh, Best way is actually just try to figure out how much each one does. Okay, so I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and convert this up uh, a little bit for the days. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep it as days. So if I take that, and so 12 divided by 5, it's going to give me 2.4. So one machine. takes 2.4 days okay so now if it's eight machines uh, eight machines to do the job I don't know. I'm setting this up one. Ah, stop. I'll stop that one right there before I screw this up. Okay, let me come back up to this one real quick because this one is a work problem. So you, you do have to set it up as an equation. So I'm sorry. Screwed you up. Sorry, Ian. So the work problem is you have to, you have to set it up according to how much it takes for each job. So I'm going to come back to this one here. So let's take a look at 60 seven okay 67 birth rates per thousand females age 15 to 19 are in the table bam 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 this data is also graphed in the figure provide a title label the axis title birth rates Females ages here, 
So, let's take a look. So, I'm going to give some legends here. So, that means that if I'm looking at it right here, label the axes. And so, this is going to be average. So, this is my average births, right? And this is going to be years. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to go ahead, I provided a title, did the label the axis, complete the legend. So now I'm going to do the legend here. So let's take a look. So in 1990, so let's figure out, because i got to figure out whites, blacks, and Hispanics. So in 1990, whites were 42.5. Uh, 42.5. 42 Oh, hey, look, it's right here. So this one, this dotted line would be whites. Okay, 1990, blacks is 116.2. 116, that one's way up here. So that one's gonna be this lighter. Hispanic is at 100, so it's this one right here. So my other one, 59.9, .9, is this one, this is my average. Okay, so now I filled in uh, title, label, axis, and complete the legends with preparing for public display. Now, all that's filled in, so the next thing we have to do is says, ah, ah, bug, ah, uh, gross, bug, still, there, got it, all right. Which race shows the smallest decrease in birth rates from 1990 to 2012? So 1990 to 2012, smallest decrease. Okay, so if you notice, from 1990 to 2012, this one, which is my Hispanic, it goes down from here all the way down to like right about there. So that's a pretty large, and this is gonna be pretty large amount. This one right here, which is my uh, black, that one's gonna go down just as much, actually more, that one's going down more, okay? So that means that the least, the smallest decrease in birth rates, okay? Smallest is actually gonna be right here for the white. So this one right here, so, it starts here and it only goes down about uh, 20%, where all these other ones are going down larger amounts. This one goes down almost 80. This one goes down 60. This one's gonna go down about 20. So that means this last one, so for this, it's, it is white on there. So make sure that you're actually taking a look at that one. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to that work problem before I leave you hanging on this one. All right, so for this right here, my work problem is going to be set up uh, that it's going to take. So. Uh, let's go work over time for this one. 
that I was going to be able to get away with it without. So for this one, it's going to come up with five machines over 12 days. So every day we get this much out of each one. So if I'm actually going to do this, so for this one right here, it should come up with something similar. So five over 12 for each one. And then now I'm gonna be eight. So now I'm gonna have eight of those. So each one of those is gonna be five twelfths. This one's gonna be eight. So I'm gonna multiply those together. And I'm gonna turn that to a 10 over three. Okay, so now from that, I could actually get that. I'm gonna have to do, in that they could actually finish the job in Okay, this one's getting me. The wording on this one got me. So yes, sorry Ian, I have made two mistakes on this one. I have just lost two followers just because of this. Because <laughs> I didn't do work problems last time when we were actually doing the reviews. Uh, Christopher Larson asks, do reciprocals of the times? Or it tells you. Do reciprocal of the time? Oh, Chris! Dang, I, I didn't, I know you're still doing this. Reciprocals of the times. All right, so it would be five machines take 12 days. And it'll take machines to do the, right here. Uh, so let me see. Got to look it up from the book. There is a formula to set this up. Uh, it's not that one. I'm trying to pull it up from the book real quick. The book has this worded differently. It actually has it with two different people working at different things. So it still has it set up as five over 12. So each machine does five twelfths of the work. Okay, now I'm adding eight machines. Uh, Okay, Chris got me here. 
All right, so y equals k divided by x inverse variation. So for this one right here, I'm ne I, you know what, I teach calculus one and two and I still, I'm getting stumped by this thing. So you say that 12 equals K over five, where K is equal to 12 uh, times five. Oh my God. 60 is equal to K. And now, it's going to be y is equal to 60 over 8. And do the math on that one. 60 divided by 8, 7.5. So y is 7.5 days. Is that what you get, Chris? I, I've never taught this as inverse. Oh. Okay, that's why. Okay, I'm trying to do it as a work problem, and they're not. Ah, uh, thank you, Chris. You're the real hero here. All right. You guys, don't forget, like and subscribe to uh, Chris's channel. <laughs> and he, he's going to be passing out loot crates here, you know, for everyone and that is, you know, following him after this. All right, you guys, uh, I will edit the video, so when I upload this, it's not going to be two hours long. <laughs> All right. Okay, talk to you guys later. Thank you. All right. Bye.